Hi, welcome to Painting with Victoria. I'm Victoria Goebel and in today's lesson we will be painting Lilacs in a Mason Jar. Before we get started, I want you to pull out your mason jar template that you got in your kit. And what we're going to do is position it on the canvas first before we paint our background. So take out your pencil and um, let's go ahead and put it off to the left side just a little. And I'm going to bring it down to about, let's see, I'll go ahead and measure it. And it's about two inches from the bottom, give or take a fraction or so. And now we're just going to take our pencil and just trace around the mason jar. Great. So now that that's down there, we'll work on our background. So take out your flat brush and let's start with white first. We're going to put some white down and take a little ultramarine blue and mix it with the white. And what we're going to do is just start blocking in around our mason jar. And feel free to dip your paintbrush in white and kind of mix the two shades together. You don't want it to just be solid. I want it to be soft with all different kinds of shades going in and out of each other. So just kind of swish that around from side to side till you get it to the end of the painting canvas here. Switch off to a little bit more white. Now we're going to go ahead and fill in the jar area. Being very careful, we want to be able to see some of that lead come through, and it usually does. But if it doesn't, we'll just redraw it back in. We're just going to scratch that in because this is going to look like glass when we get done. Sometimes I'll go a slight shade off just so that I can see. Let's fill that in. Okay. And we'll come back in and do some more details on that. So I'm going to graduate and add a little bit of lavender to this. And the way we do that is we take a little magenta and mix it into our ultramarine blue and white. There we go. Very pretty. Okay, and so now I'm just gonna start from the corner right here and bring it down until it blends right in with the blue. And just keep doing the same thing. Going from side to side, almost like a crisscross motion, will help blend it in. There we go, and let's just go ahead and maybe make a little bit more. A little magenta. And your shade can always change. This time it's a little bit darker, but I like that, so I'm just gonna keep applying that and blending it in. I'm gonna take a little bit of white and apply it in a few places just to kind of soften it a little bit more. And again, just, just have fun with this. This is the fun part, just blending in lots of soft colors. We're almost 
almost ready to change into a white color. I'm gonna take my paintbrush and just dip it in the white and come across here just to kind of give it the illusion of a table. And this doesn't have to be exact because I kind of want to blend that right into the background. Blending and blending and blending, just like putting makeup on. Okay, just stand back and look at that. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch over to more of a lavender color across the bottom. So I'm gonna take my magenta again, a little more ultramarine blue. I'm Yes, this is ultramarine blue and more white. This time a little bit more ultramarine blue and less magenta. So it's kind of a periwinkle color. There we go. And I'm gonna come across the bottom and blend that right in with the last color. And some more white. Soften that up a little. And this time I'm going across because this is the table. Maybe dip it in a little bit more white. All right, definitely gonna have to redraw my um, mason jar in because it's getting very hard to see it. So let me put a little there, just so I know that was there. Okay, I think that's a good place to stop. Um, we're gonna let this dry, put it outside for about five or 10 minutes. Um, it should be dry to touch, or you can take a blow dryer and hit it and it should take about the same amount of time. So we'll come back and work on our flowers next. Okay, so we're back and our canvas is dry, right? Can you touch it like this and it feels nice and dry? Then it's ready to be worked on. If not, go back and work on drying it some more. Um, the first thing we're gonna do is redraw our mason jar. I've noticed it in a few places, I can't see it at all. So I'm just gonna place it right back where it was and let's see, that's good enough right there. And go ahead and re-sketch with my pencil, the jar. There we go. Okay, so good, now I can see it again. Okay, what we're going to work on right now is we're going to work on doing the lilacs. And um, the lilacs, each flower, each, um, let's just say, glomp of flowers has teeny tiny flowers inside and each one has about maybe five little petals. So this part can be very time consuming and I'm not gonna make you watch me do every single pe petal, we'll put it in a little time lapse. But I will demonstrate how it gets done and then I want you to take your time. Um, we are doing wet on wet, so if you're gonna start the lilacs, make sure that you have enough time to uh, start it and finish it. So with that said, let's just get dive right into it and what we're gonna start with is our, we're gonna take our flat brush and we're gonna take some magenta and some ultramarine blue and make a nice periwinkle blue color. Sometimes if you add more blue, it's more of a periwinkle and if you add more magenta, it becomes more of a great color. And so now I'm gonna take some white and mix it in that. Just wanna make sure that my color is a deep, lilac color and this is very pretty right here let me just test it and see yep i like that a lot so we're going to go ahead and do a few that have this warmer great color and then we're going to do a few that have the blue tone to it so i'm going to go ahead and this is this is the fun part we're just going to put some glumps like this just like that Almost think of it as like a, a little pile of grapes. And 
Now I'm going to stop right here and add some more blue to this color and make it more of a periwinkle color. And I'm going to do a grouping back here. And let's see, let's go ahead and put a little bit right here. Even going off the canvas is nice. So just a little right here. Okay. I think that's plenty of lilacs. So while it's wet, here we go. I'm going to take my um, number two round brush and I'm going to dip it in white. And I'm just going to pick a spot and start doing almost like a little, um, well, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And what it's doing, it's catching the wet paint and um, mixing in with the white while I do it. So again, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And you're just gonna do this all the way through. The only suggestion I have is first do this color. And um, by the time you get done doing this color, if you find that that color dried, then let's go ahead and reapply some more of the blue uh, purple color, which is kind of like a dark periwinkle because your paint really has to be dry, uh, wet while you're working on it. So I'm gonna keep going. I kinda gotta work fast because I want my um, paint to stay wet while I'm doing this. And I'm gonna go ahead and put you on time lapse now and so you don't have to watch me do all of these. It looks like I am done. I'm gonna kind of look it over and see. You can definitely see where the blue ones have more blue in it and the ones that are definitely more grape are right here. And that's good because I kind of wanted it, didn't want it to all be the same color. So I'm gonna rinse out my brush now and what we're gonna do is make some leaves. And so you're gonna take out your number six um, round brush and we're gonna dip it in the oxide green. And what we're gonna do is, just like when we did with the roses, if you, if you haven't taken um, my online class for the roses, it's kind of the same thing. I use the point on my brush to start the leaf. So you press down and lift, press down and lift. And so these leaves can be as big or as little as you want them to be. And so we're gonna go ahead and just apply leaves all over. Some of them go right off the canvas and that's cool. Once you get it framed, it'll be very pretty. Be careful not to get it, um, um, touch your flowers, unless you want it to be in front of your flowers. But if you want them to go behind your flowers, you have to be very careful not to touch them. And then we use the same brush to just sort of connect everything with a stem. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a lot down here. I always like to um, think about the direction of my leaves. Do I want them to be going this way or this way? 
Um, and so think about that before you actually um, take your paintbrush and lay it down. There we go. I think that's pretty good. I think I'm just gonna get a few on this side. Okay, so now what we're going to do is paint the stems. Now the stems would be show through the glass, so we have to make sure we put them down first. And so what I'm gonna do is, let's get a little greenery here first, and what we're gonna do is just hand paint some lines that represent the stems. Sure you fill in the center like that. Okay. And there was probably one, two, three, maybe five. So I'm gonna do five stems. Okay, and all that's gonna get covered up with our, um, when we paint on the glass, but we wanna make sure those stems show through. Okay, so let's see, let's work on a little detail on our leaves now. And the way we do that is, let's rinse this brush out. All right, so I'm going to take this paintbrush that I just cleaned and dip it into yellow. And my leaves are still wet, which I want because when I go and stroke the yellow on here, look how pretty that looks. It just sort of blends right in with the green. Now, if your leaves are dry, then you'll wanna just kind of hit them with a little bit more paint again. And that's okay if, you, if they did dry. I just happen to work a little fast. And this just really brightens up all of our, our foliage here. Just a, sometimes just one stroke is all you need to give it the highlights that it needs. There we go. more and we're done and I'm just gonna highlight in a few places my stems that's enough right there okay let me just clean this up all right okay so while this is drying I'm gonna work on the shadow down here and since our mason jar is going to be um, a kind of a turquoise blue color I want to kind of have some of that reflect on our table right here. So let's go ahead and take our blue with a little bit of yellow and add some white. Oh, yeah, this is pretty. Add a little bit more ultramarine blue to that. Okay, so I'm gonna just run that along the bottom and we're gonna take our sponge Smooth that out, just so it's nice and soft. If we don't put a shadow behind or underneath, it almost looks like it's just floating in space, and we don't want that. So we wanna make sure we always include a shadow. And this is also going to be the color that we use for our jar, so it will be um, the ultramarine blue with a, a tiny bit of the green and some white. So let's just go ahead and let this dry really well. We'll come back and do the jar and then we're done. So about five, 10 minutes out in the sun or five or 10 minutes with a blow dryer. Welcome back. My canvas is nice and dry. It's ready to paint the jar now. So we are gonna take some of the um, green, the oxide green, and mix it with some ultramarine blue to create a nice 
green blue color and I'm gonna put some white in that and that's probably a little too light so I'm gonna add a little bit more green and blue kind of want to have a medium tone there we go now it's looking like more of a vintage I'm looking for more of a vintage blue color all right I'm gonna add some water to that kind of there we go all right so um, I can see my jar very clearly from when I sketched it on. So just like when we did our vase for our roses, we're going to outline with the paintbrush. And I've got my flat brush that I'm using right now. Outline the outer part of the jar and kind of brush it in. And while it's wet, I'm going to take my sponge almost like scratching it or blending it right into the center of the jar but what it what it's creating is a transparent look which is what glass is okay and let's go ahead and do the other side Let me get this right here okay there we go and so now I'm gonna do the other side the same thing we're going to blend that in sometimes I find it's easier if you turn your uh, canvas around rather than try to do it from the side make sure you get it all you don't want to leave anything undone because the glass wouldn't be like that so let's see this is good got my color going through the whole thing Definitely looks like it's transparent. You can go in the motion of the jar like this. And let's see, we're gonna go ahead and finish this on the top. Okay, so the bottom would be darker because it has more glass to it. So we're gonna go ahead and maybe put some of these lines in here like this that are in the jar just like that, the same color. And I'm gonna go ahead now and take my paintbrush and just dip it right into the white. Don't even clean your brush out, just dip it into the white. And we're going to go ahead and put some lovely shine marks on it. And I can use my sponge to kind of smooth that out. Maybe a few more, definitely across the bottom. to the side here and going across the jar you could just go ahead and you know play with it see which 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 satisfies you and and just add as much as you want because with glass there would be lots of reflections so with this part being done right here I want to have even a brighter shine on it so I'm going to dip it right back into the white straight white and then I'm going to hit it in a few places where I really want that shine to pop just like that and then maybe just right here just along the outside of the jar would be nice just where it's hitting on the very edge yeah now it looks like glass right okay so that looks good to me I think this is a good place to stop with this the only thing that you can do if you want to I don't always say that you have to do it but if you want to you can take the yellow and the green and make a really pretty lime green color and this would take a while to do, so it's up to you if you want to do it. But sometimes I put like a little green dot in the middle of some of my flowers just to give it that little bit of dimension and it is actually in there. And I just think it looks so pretty like that. So I'm going to close for now and keep working on my little dots and um, thank you for 
painting with me today. It's always fun to teach you new and fun techniques in painting. Um, if you want to check out some of my other online classes and send away for the kits and try your hand at something different, please do. Um, thanks for coming and we'll see you next time.